Welcome everyone to day two. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being a part of this challenge. It has been so much fun already. We've been through day one where we had a very exciting uh, chat on vision casting for your business and clarifying your offer. If you missed either of those sessions from yesterday, you can still get those at the resource hub, which is christyjohnsoncreative.com slash kickstart resources. Everything is going to be there. The workbook from day one, the session recording from uh, the two sessions from day one. And when this recording is done, we'll put up that recording as well. Also, there is a workbook for day two. You can go ahead and download that at the resource hub again, which is christyjohnsoncreative.com slash kickstart resources. There's a workbook there. You can take notes from this session with Nicole. And then there uh, are some information is some information about session two there. So bring that with you to session two. I'm just so excited uh, to have my guest today. Nicole is an amazing wedding photographer. She and I met uh, a long time ago <laughs> when we were still learning about wedding photography and building our businesses. And we have grown a lot together. And I'm just so continually impressed by you, Nicole. Everything that you are putting out is just in so inspiring to me. Not only is Nicole a wedding photographer, she is also an attorney. Yes, she went to law school and did all of the things and is an attorney for creatives. And she is going to be talking to us today about starting your business the legal way. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yes. Okay. Before we dive into your presentation, I would love for you to just Give us a little bit of background about how you came to be doing what you're doing. Tell us about law school and your full-time job and now being a full-time business owner. I want to hear about that. Yeah. So I went to law school during like the 2020 pandemic was when I graduated law school. And I'd actually been in business as a wedding photographer for about six years at that point. So I've been in business for about eight years now. And it's been so great, so unconventional. This is like totally non non-traditional path in the terms of like what normal people do right but um i just i have such a passion for wedding photography and i kept it as a side hustle throughout law school throughout college and something was just tugging at me i actually got a corporate job um right out of law school i started working as a real estate attorney and i loved what i did it was great but the nine to five grind just wasn't for me and um, i think a lot of people probably listening, probably can relate to that, um, especially if you're trying to start a business, maybe you're feeling that way right now. Um, and so I was feeling that way uh, actually about a year ago, almost to the day. And I decided it was time to make a change. It was a time to time to take make a bet on myself and and take my future in my own hands and not leave it to someone else to decide how much money I can make, when my hours should be all those things. And so I put in my two weeks notice. They wanted me to stay for a month because it was really unexpected, which I was totally fine with. And then I went full force into my business full time. And it's just been the most rewarding and amazing thing um, I've ever done, truthfully. And through that, I've just been able to you know, continue the legal side of things. I think there's a huge need in our industry as creatives and also as an attorney. And um, I know when I was first starting my business long before I went to law school, it was very confusing for me. I did not know where to start, what to look for, how to create a contract. I Googled all these things and I heard lots of conflicting information. I didn't even start a business bank account until like three years into my business. I did not know what I was doing. So um, I truly think that as creatives, it's it's hard for us to want to do like the legal work because it can be either confusing, time consuming, or there's just not a lot of like concise, clear information about it. So my desire is to bridge the gap between creative and legal industries and to kind of give you like the best of both worlds because I've been in both shoes. So I've been a wedding photographer. I've also been an attorney. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I do both and that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but it's also <laughs> like a great, a fun conversation starter. And it's an encouragement to you guys that are listening that you don't have to make sense to people. You just have to do <laughs> yes. 
what is what's good for you and what uh, makes sense for your life and making sense to people is not the ultimate goal right it's not it's not the end all be all what what matters is your path and where you're going so um yeah that's a little bit about kind of where I'm at where I've been and excited to get get started on this topic too to to share I'm very excited as well and I love what you said that you decided to bet on yourself and to make that move for your business that's exactly what I was talking about yesterday in the challenge was that we you have to have a mind a mindset shift in your business to say no I'm going to make this happen I'm going to do this and you kind of have to act as if it's already a reality like you already have this successful business um, I know that one thing that you have done too is like setting hours or putting, making stand up meetings with yourself every week, which everyone can hear about on your podcast, um, <laughs> the self starter podcast. Um, so I just, I just love that you said that because that mindset is so important to, to, to take a chance on yourself and to believe in yourself. Um, I love that so much. Yeah. And yeah, for super sure. glad to have you because agreed. This is a huge topic. I remember fe feeling very overwhelmed by all the legal stuff. So I'm very glad to have you to, to talk to the audience about getting started legally. So I know you have some slides and I'm very excited. So let's go ahead and dive in into that. Yes. Let me say one more thing to what you were just saying, because I think okay. it's so important, the, um, the betting on yourself thing. So I remember when I was thinking about quitting my job and I didn't know whether or not I should do it. And I was listening to a podcast actually, and she was saying, um, why would I leave my future to someone else? Like as in my boss or my company, it's actually like, it's more like stable and it is more sure if I just do it myself, if I, if I go out on my own, actually yeah. having a corporate job is like less, less of control because your destiny is in the hands of someone else. So yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that's yeah. Important. So let's talk about how to do it. The actual practicality of okay. how to get your business started. I'm so excited. Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you see my Perfect. screen? Cool. Yeah. All right. So like we said before, I am going to walk you through the basic steps of how to legally start your business. First of all, I would not be an attorney if I didn't have a disclaimer in small print on the board. I have to let you know that even though I am a licensed South Carolina attorney, I'm not your attorney. And watching this training, engaging in questions does not um, entitle you to an attorney-client relationship. It does not create an attorney-client relationship. So just want to make that super clear. I'm here to inform you, to educate you, but not give you legal advice. I would highly recommend that you reach out to an attorney in your state or in your local area for your specific business needs. Okay, so I already talked about uh, myself a little bit, but why bother with legal with legal things, right? Like, why does it matter? Obviously, you want to protect yourself, but beyond that, you want to be a good business owner. And if you don't have the clear and concise steps, like if you're not if you're not filing the proper forms, if you're not getting business insurance, if you're not getting the proper licensing, if you're not separating your personal and business bank accounts, it's just not going to be a good business model. And you're not going to be able to serve your clients super well. So it goes beyond just protecting yourself. It really is just holistically as a good business owner, you want to have these steps in place so that you can serve your clients to the fullest. So that's the real why behind what we're talking about today. All right. So the first step is that you want to choose your entity type. And we're going to go over a few different types of entities. Now, you might be questioning what even is an entity? Well, um, first of all, you as a business owner, even before you file any documentation, right? Like before you even, you might not even have a business name, but you are starting to either get clients, you're maybe starting to do work, maybe you're creating a product. From that point in time, you are a business um, and you're a sole proprietor. And so what that means is it's just you and your own business and there's no separation between you as the individual and you as the business. So that's what that means. But you don't have to file any documents to actually become a business necessarily. Obviously, there's probably going to be state and local things that you'll have to file. We'll talk about that in a second. But for all intents and purposes, you are a sole proprietor as soon as you start running your business. Now, there's a couple other business entities we're going to talk about. So the other one is partnership. 
There's another one called Limited Liability Company. You're probably a little bit familiar with that. It's my favorite kind. And then a corporation. So we're going to go through each of these. So like I said, sole proprietorship, it's a one owner business. So you, as soon as you start running your business, you are a sole proprietor. Um, if there's two or more people in your business, then you're going to skip ahead. Do not, do not collect $200, do not pass go. You'll go ahead to partnership. We'll talk about that next. Um, again, so sole proprietorships are simple and easy to set up. You don't have to file any papers with your state. You are automatically a sole proprietor once you start running your business, unless you filed documents otherwise. Um, again, like I said, you're not legally separate from your business. So you as an individual and you as your business is not separate. So this comes uh, important on tax time. You're taxed as an individual, not as a business. So it's a pass through taxation. Um, and you're also personally liable for all debts. Also, if you get sued, you're personally liable as well. So you can probably tell from that last point that you probably don't want to be a sole proprietor. Now, there might be instances where you might want to stay a sole proprietor, but for most business owners, you're probably going to want to choose a different type of entity. We'll talk about that in a second. So the next type of entity is a partnership. Again, this is pretty much the same thing as a sole proprietorship, but it is two or more business owners. So you, again, don't have to file papers with your state to become a partnership. Um, and then there's two types of partnerships. We're going to touch on these just briefly in case there's someone out there that needs this information. But a general partnership is where the partners are personally liable for all debts and they're sued for the full amount. So basically, they're equal partners and they can also um, they can also bind the entire um, company by signing a contract. So they're both like equal partners, but they can also sign on behalf of the entire company. Um, you can see how that might be a little bit scary, especially if you are not aligned with your business partner. You, you know, th that's something that you want, want to consider if you're looking at partnerships. There's also limited partnerships. So this requires at least one general partner who's over like all the decision making, all the personal liability, that kind of thing. And then one limited partner who usually just contributes financially, but they don't really have control over the company. So those are the two different types of partnerships. Again, partnership is basically the two-person or more form of a sole proprietorship. So it is passed through taxation as well, which means that, again, the individuals and the business are not separate. You also acquire that personal liability. So you can see that there's not really a lot of protection there. So introducing the limited liability company, which is my personal favorite. I said that before. But this is probably the most popular option for those of you that are watching. You're probably going to want to be a limited liability company. Um, I saw a question in a Facebook group recently about like when to become a limited liability company. My answer to that is as soon as possible. Um, I think there's differing opinions about this. Some people say like you should do this once you hit a certain income threshold. But I think why not start when you first start your business? Go ahead and separate your your expenses, your income out into two different bank accounts, like get everything separate so that you don't have to worry about it later on. I waited a little too long to do this and I regret it. So um, definitely, I would say as soon as you start your business, this is something that you want to consider. So what? The, yes, good. Same. OK, and then. Um, so what's so good about limited liability company? Well, the, the two benefits are that it combines that pass through taxation of a sole proprietorship with that same protection against the personal liability as a corporation. We're going to talk about a corporation next. But basically, you get to be taxed as an individual. So there's no separation tax wise. But there is separation between the individual and the business when it comes to liability. So if you're sued, if you owe debts, if, you're, if your business owes debts, they can't come after you as an individual. So it generally protects the members from legal and financial liability in the case of a lawsuit or debt. Um, and then to form this, you must file your articles of organization with your secretary of state. States are really good about providing information. Like for instance, in South Carolina, you can go on the secretary of state's website. It is a really simple process. I actually offer this as a service um, in South Carolina, but you do not need an attorney to do this. Um, you can go on their website and oftentimes you can file online. I think pretty much every state you can file online. It's super fast, really, really easy. Um, in South Carolina, you just pay a one-time fee. Some states are different. They do like a yearly fee, but it's a super easy process. And I don't, I say that to say, do not get intimidated by creating an LLC because it's not as hard as you think. And literally, if you go and Google it right now, you can probably find the exact steps probably takes you less than honestly 20 minutes to do. So I'd highly, highly encourage you to do that. Okay. Next type of entity is corporation. 
you probably are not going to have to worry about this, but I want to just touch on it briefly. Um, a corporation is a legal, legal structure that imposes certain legal and tax rules on its owners. So basically, this is an entirely separate entity from you as an individual, right? So even though I say the word corporation, it doesn't mean that it has to be a large corporation like Disney or Apple or something like that. A corporation can be a small venture as well. Um, the difference is that it's a totally separate entity, it's totally separate legal entity from its owners. And then the shareholders are normally protected from personal liability for business debts. Um, and then again, when it comes to taxation, the corporation itself is subject to tax rather than the pass through taxation we talked about in all three of the other entities. So I'm going to have you stop and consider which entity might be right for you. I'm thinking it probably might be LLC, but consider which one is the best fit for you right now. Think about what values you have, how you want to pay, pay taxes, um, if you want to have that liability protection. Those are some great things to consider at this point. All right, step two. So startup steps. We're going to go over a few different areas that you should start thinking about after you've created your entity. Um, and so if it's an LLC, again, you're going to file with the Secretary of State. They're going to give you a, probably a document from that Secretary of State saying that you're an official business entity. You're also probably going to want to create an operating agreement of some kind. We're not going to touch on that in this um, in this slideshow in particular, but those are some things that you'll want to do before this. So again, file those organizational documents. Um, and then secondly, you want to obtain your employer identification number. So like I said about the Secretary of State situation with your um, LLC formation, an employer identification number, obtaining that is even easier than filing with your Secretary of State. It is the easiest process. I put this off way longer than I should have to when I first started because I thought it was scary. I thought the IRS was going to come get me. I didn't know like what it was, um, but this is so, so easy. So all business types should obtain an EIN. Um, they're not necessarily like legally required for everyone, but I would highly, highly recommend that you get one. It's basically like a social security number for your business, and you'll likely need it for things like business banking, local tax registration, federal tax returns business licensure, all those things. It's really, really easy and free from the IRS. You can do it all online as well. And just if you want to jot this down in your notes, if you just Google form SS-4, that's the form you'll need to fill out. But you can do it all online. Super simple. So you definitely want to get one of those. Step three is local business licenses. So most cities require all businesses to register with that city's tax collector, um, regardless of the business type and size. This is what's called a business license. That's the purpose of them getting you to register so that you're, you're registered with the local tax collector. Um, it can be called different things. So tax registration, business tax application, business license, tax certification. But this is basically your local government's way of keeping track of your business for tax purposes. Um, there might even be like county registration. So it's something to keep in mind. So for instance, I live in Greenville County, but I also reside in Taylor's, which is not, it's like a suburb of Greenville, South Carolina. If you're not from here, you won't understand that. But basically Taylor, South Carolina does not have a business licensing process, but Greenville County does. So just something to keep in mind, you wanna look at both city and county. Okay, step four, specialized licenses and permits. So someone like me, an attorney can't just, you know, offer legal advice, take on clients willy nilly. I can't just, you know, do this without having a license. Obviously, I went to three years of law school and then I took the bar exam and I got licensed through my state and I have a continuing legal education to continue to keep me licensed. So things like that, you know, attorneys, doctors, cosmetologists, um, you know, those types of things you might need. Um, uh, a specialized license. So basically something that the way I look at it is if you could be a harm to the public by doing your business like unlawfully or not in a good way, then you probably need a license to do it. So, you know, carpenter, like I said at the bottom, cosmetologist, carpenter, lawyer. Um, and then some businesses and activities are prohibited. So like even certain activities are prohibited. You might need a license for that. This is just something you want to take up with your local government. Um, zoning and local permits also. So for instance, like if you have a building where that building is located might need a, t a type of zoning permit or you might not be able to conduct a certain type of business in that area because it's zoned for something else. So just make sure you're covering all your bases, especially if you have a, if you have a physical location. Okay, so stop and consider what are the next steps in your business? Maybe you've already 
formed your entity, but that was it. You just kind of formed the LLC and then you let it go. You didn't create a separate business bank account. You didn't get an EIN. Think about where you are in that process and go ahead and jot down a couple next steps based on what we talked about. Some action items that you can just do today or tomorrow. We have, we're, we're, in, we're on Tuesday, right? So you have the rest of the week to get some stuff started. And a lot of these that I'm talking about are really, really simple. I know it, it could sound daunting before we started this slide, but um, you're, hopefully you're seeing that these are actually really simple and straightforward processes that you can start today. Okay, final. Oh, I skipped ahead. Here we go. The final step is entering into contracts. And so when you think of a business attorney, you probably think about contracts most of all, right? These are the agreements that we enter into our clients with, and you want to make sure your clients are rock, or your contracts are rock solid so that you are not getting, um, you know, un unfortunate situations where you are either liable, you're getting sued, and you didn't protect yourself properly. Like there's just so much headache that can arise when it comes to disagreements, disputes between us and clients. And uh, there's been plenty of heartbreaking stories uh, with people that either don't have a contract or don't have a really good contract. And so we're going to talk about some contract basics here. So what I like to say to all my legal clients when I start working with them is that, again, here's the common theme for the talk today is that it's not as hard as you think it might be. And that the same goes for contracts. Contracts are not as hard as you think they might be. Obviously, you want to consult with an attorney. You want to talk to someone in your area that knows what they're doing and can help you with, with your specific business. But when it comes down to it, contracts are very simple. You want to make sure that everything is clear and that all parties are in agreement. Something of value has been exchanged for something else of value. And you also want to have it in writing. So as long as you're just being very clear about the expectations, what everyone is doing, how much you're being paid, and it's all listed out, the way you should think about it and frame it is that, okay, let me like think ahead. Let's say that this client sues me one day. Let's say I get, I get called into court and I have to testify about my contract or the judge is looking at my contract to decide whether or not this was covered. That's what you want to think about. That's the lens you want to think through. You want to think, okay, if for some reason the worst happened and my contract was called into question, would this cover all my bases? And when you think about it like that, it's pretty easy to just really run through. Now, if you're just starting your business, you might not know some like unfortunate or bad situations that might come up. So let's say you're just starting your wedding photography business or you're just starting your you know, graphic design business. You might not know from experience what clients might be potentially mad at you about or upset at you about. And so I would encourage you here to just talk to other creatives in your industry and just like talk through maybe some unfortunate situations other people have had, um, dealing with difficult clients. Think about like ways that you can get that experience without like having it yourself, but just talk through those potential situations so that you can protect yourself in your contract. So I'd highly recommend utilizing other creatives in your field in this area. Um, but again, you want to include a clear outline of what each party is agreeing to, including payment. You also want to anticipate any areas of confusion or points of potential conflict. That's what we just talked about. And then you also want to provide for recourse or remedy in case either side does not follow through to completion. So those are the three big areas in your contract. This is what you want to have. And you might think like, oh, well, I'm not an attorney. I don't know how to word it. You definitely, you just word it clearly. You don't have to use legal mumbo jumbo. It's not about saying here and after and therefore and those kind of things. It's really about being clear. Now, again, I would always recommend, again, that you would reach out to an attorney, have them review your contract. That's going to make you 100% sound the most at peace, obviously. But it's, again, not as complicated as you might think, right? It's about being clear and concise predicting what might go wrong, providing a remedy for that. So um, you also might want to consider some of these common sections. Um, these are some ideas for you. And I actually have a freebie. I actually just made it recently. So it's not like on here, but Christy's going to give you a link for it later. And yeah, it's, they uh, can get that at the, at the resource hub, uh, christyjohnsoncreative.com slash kickstart resources. Yes. So definitely go to that resource hub, download it. It's five must-have contract clause 
uh, contract clauses for your business. And I walk through literally the top five contract clauses, what should all go in there. It also has like some worksheet sections where you can like write down um, ideas for your contract. And it's a great freebie. It's a PDF guide. So it's easy to down download as well. But these are some common sections that you might want to put in your contract. So your title, right? The title is like the what exactly what it says. It's at the very top of the agreement. It says who is a party basically to this agreement. Maybe it talks about what the agreement is, you know, a wedding photography services agreement or attorney client agreement, things like that. Um, you also want to include the names and addresses of all the parties. So it's very clear who is working with who. You want to also define who is who. So for instance, like for my photography contract, Nicole Lauren Photography LLC here and after photographer. And then throughout the contract, I'm referred to as just photographer. You want to clearly define the people. Any definitions that need to be included will go at the top. Um, full description of promises made, right? So promises on both sides, not just you as a service provider, but also your client. What promises are they making? Maybe that's payment. Maybe, there, maybe that's another exchange of goods. Maybe they are um, agreeing to to timely communicate with you. Like maybe there's certain obligations that they have. You're, you wanna list those in here as well. You also wanna include the price of the product or services, the payment arrangements, the payment processor that you use, when it's due, um, any late fees, interest that accrues if they pay late. Um, you also wanna put a statement of any warranties made. So any like if then statements, um, any warranties that you're, that you're making to your client. The contract term, so how long is it in effect? Um, description of conditions, so grounds for termination are going to go in here as well. And then a breach of contract outline. So what happens if for some reason one or both parties breaches the contract or um, does not perform their obligations, then what happens in that case? And then again, you also want to make sure that you put a clause in there that talks about which state laws apply to the transaction. So you always want to make sure, especially if you're working with an out-of-state client or out-of-country client, you want to make sure that your state laws are going to govern govern any proceedings that happen subsequently. You don't want to travel to somewhere else to litigate, right? So that's why that is in there. Okay, so stop and consider. If you already have a contract, how do they measure up? When we're talking through some of these things, these sections, these um, things to put in your contract, what What's coming to mind? Are you feeling like they measure up? Are you feeling like they don't? Maybe they're lacking in some area. I would encourage you to just take a take a second and think about that. If you don't have a contract at all, that's actually really great because then you have a blank slate and you can just go ahead and implement some of these things that I'm talking about. Go ahead and write a contract, have an attorney review it. You should be good to go. All right, that brings me to my next point. And that is that I actually have a contract template shop. Um, it is specifically for photographers right now. I've just launched it. So it's very, very new. But we're going to add multiple different contracts as time goes on for different service providers and creatives. So um, would love for you to check it out. You can go to legallycreative.com. You can actually use the code kickstart for 10% off your purchase as being a listener and um, I guess also a watcher of this um, uh, training. So would love for you to check it out. But they're all attorney drafted by me. And <laughs> LOL that I have this Latin still in here. I fixed that since I made that recording. <laughs> But um, but yes, as you can see, it's very, very new, but they're all attorney drafted by me. They're easy to download. You enter all your business details in it and you should be good to go to be able to use them in your business to feel protected and just clarify any confusion when it comes to legal stuff. I think contracts can be so tricky and feel so daunting, but they don't have to be. All right, so let's recap. So the first thing we talked about was choosing your entity type. We talked about sole proprietorships, partnerships, LLC, and uh, corporation. So think about which one might be the right thing for you. The next step is filing documentation. So looking over business licensure, getting your EIN, looking over specialized licensing, things like that. That's probably going to be handled with your local and state government. And then the third thing was solidifying your contracts. So looking through your contracts, making sure they protect you, they're legally sound. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I have for you. I'd love to take any questions if there are any, or if not, um, we can just chat. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, I would love to have everyone uh, reach out to you for questions. We're, we are out of time for questions, but I'm so grateful that you came on. That was so much really, really good information. And you explained it in such a clear way 
that I know that anyone watching, listening um, is going to just feel such a sense of relief of like, yes, I can do this. And I know that is exactly what you intended. And um, so super good job with that. Thank you so much. Yay. Good. I'm glad. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, I want to give everyone some next steps. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Nicole. Um, I have her Instagram handle, website and everything linked in the workbook. Um, she's underscored Nicole Lauren on Instagram. Reach out to her there. You can also email me. You should have my email if you signed up for this challenge. Um, I would have emailed you get, to get this recording. So email me. I can pass it along to Nicole. And so this is a challenge. It's a five-day challenge. And a lot of what Nicole talked about, I'm actually going to be challenging you to do in our session two um, today at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. Um, if you downloaded the workbook, you can go ahead and, and look ahead, cannot kind of read ahead of the session two notes. And maybe you want to go ahead and file your articles of organization for your LLC and then come back at um, five o'clock Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific to have your um, to have your next um, challenge of opening your business bank account or getting your EIN. I have all of these things as a challenge for you today. And the ones that we don't get to today, um, I'm challenging you to put a calendar block on your calendar to get that done. So Download the, the workbook. It's at christyjohnsoncreative.com slash kickstart resources. Email me or DM Nicole if you have any questions specifically related to this topic and come back for session two at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. I will see you all then. Thank you so much. Oh, and tomorrow is really, really amazing. We have two speakers. We have um, Sarah Ziesler coming to talk about productivity and we have um, Alyssa Brooke, uh, to come and talk to us about websites. It's going to be really amazing. So you don't want to miss that as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Going to go ahead and stop the live and I will see you next time.